All right. Hello, everybody. This is Tony Peterson. I started the Intentional Trader back in 2009. I'm a uh, reformed, struggling trader. I struggled for about seven years before I was able to kind of start seeing the other side. And uh, it was a process, I tell you. I'm all about process. Tried real hard to skip the process and just find that one thing that was going to make me successful. Um, as it turns out, the hard work and taking the time to be successful is actually the fastest way to do it. So that's what I try to share with you guys at these types of events. We're going to do that first, and then we're going to... Um, uh, talk about some other stuff. Let's do this real quick first. So this is essentially, uh, this says that day trading is risky. Don't trade with more money than you can afford to lose because you will most likely lose it. All information in this presentation is for educational purposes only. No promises of trading success are to be understood as expressed or implied. All right. So for those of you that uh, didn't get a chance to watch the video or weren't able to join us on Tuesday, uh, this is this was the title of the slot of the uh, presentation on Tuesday. So we're going to do a real quick recap. I mean, real quick. I'm going to skip a whole bunch of stuff, um, but I am going to hit some of the high points. So we're going to talk about uh, some some pain points. You know, not because you don't know that what they are, but just mostly so you don't feel alone. Um, actually, we're going to skip a lot of the pain points and get right down to the core of what it is that's causing the pain. Okay. So you can say, well, emotions are causing the pain, but there's an underlying source of, of that pain that's causing the pain. And that's because we all think about money while we're trading. And we know that emotions are a huge part of what we do in day trading, and it's kept a lot of us from being successful. Uh, and so we talked about that there are two very specific things you can do starting immediately to minimize the influence of these negative emotions. So what we talked about was all the emotions and that at the core of each and every emotion, it's money. And we know that we can't remove emotions from trading, okay? It's impossible to remove emotions from day trading. You can try, but you won't succeed. You know, the mantra of day trading gurus is you must manage your emotions because then that takes the responsibility off of your failure. It takes it off of them. They say, well, if you can't manage your emotions, then, you know, that's not my fault. They don't want to actually say that, you know, it's, it's not all about the emotions necessarily, but you've got, you, you're not going to be able to manage your emotions. Okay, you're, you are human, so you're going to have them. And the, the, the problem with saying, okay, i got to manage my emotions, is you're setting yourself up for yet another failure. You'll feel like, well, if I manage my emotions, I can do this trading thing. But then you fail at the trading, and you fail at managing your emotions, so you feel like a double failure. What these people should be telling you is you cannot remove emotions when you're day trading, but you can manage the underlying cause of the emotions, which is money, right? So if we can remove money from the job of day trading, okay? So it's hard for us to imagine that how you can remove money from day trading, because it's all about money. We're watching price move up and down uh, a price ladder, right? Uh, it's all about the price of something. So, and price is all about money. 
So it, it doesn't occur to people that there is a way you can do this, but it's a process, okay? So the first thing when I decided I needed to start doing this, the first thing that I decided to do was to stop having money right in my face all the time. Meaning, you know, the P&L on your trading platform, it'll show you how much uh, money you've made or lost throughout the day. And you keep looking at it, don't you? Keep looking, keep looking. If it's green, you like to look at it because, hey, I'm making money. Of course, if it's red, you look at it and go, okay, I got to get my money back. I got to get that back. So you're having a negative influence by looking at the the red and you even have a negative influence by looking at the green because then you just think you're, you know, you're bulletproof and you're just a great trader and you can do anything you want and you're just going to win, win, win. So looking at your P&L, looking at your platform, looking at your accounts tab, um, you can, I don't know if you know this, but you can remove all those tabs from your um, platform so you don't have the urge to keep looking at money. So what I would do is I would remove anywhere where I could tempt myself to look at money. Now, if I dug deep enough, sure, you can you can find how you've done during the day, but you should know pretty much how you've done throughout the day. Um, you don't have to think about it. So I stopped I never, uh, since I've been successful, I never track money. A lot of people think, do you have a, uh, a process or, or a goal, a financial goal, a money goal for how much to make in a day before you quit trading? Yes, I have a goal, but it has nothing to do with money. Money is a byproduct, but it's not what it's about. So my goal for the day is a net plus three winning trades or a net plus three losing trades. And then I stop trading live and I finish trading in sim for the rest of that session, which is at 12 noon Eastern time. This is a conditioning process. Okay. Here's another part of the conditioning process. And I and this worked for me, and it has worked for hundreds of our uh, of our traders. So here's another way of thinking about this: If you were trading somebody else's money, would you be so inclined to be making these mistakes that you make and and having these emotions? If I hired you to come trade my trading account for me, and I said specifically, I don't care if you win or lose. At the end of each day, you're going to come stand in front of me at my desk, and you're going to explain where on the trade plan that I gave you on your, on your job description, where on that job description did you uh, uh, use those rules for this trade? or use those rules for not taking something that might have looked like a trade. So pretend you work for me, and your only job, your one job, is to execute your trade plan. That's it. That's all I require of you. Win or lose doesn't matter, because the money counting part happens in the accounting office, not in the trading room. That's separate. Those are two different things, all right? This is exactly like any other job or profession that you have ever had that you have to get good at. Your focus should always be on doing a good job because if you do, you get paid. And that's exactly what day trading is. It's a job. Now, how do you get good at it? So I use this graphic on the right for the for the uh, session on Tuesday. This guy really doesn't know how to use a hammer. Doesn't have a clue, but he's going to haul off and smack that nail as hard as he can again. Chances are he's not going to have much luck. 
hitting that nail on the head, or and he's going to smash his thumb, right? So how do we get good? How can we get to a point where we know if we haul off like that, we're going to hit that nail on the head? We know that we've got good aim. We've got the confidence, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to practice. And we're going to practice small. And we're going to just kind of take that hammer and just go tap, 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 little taps so that you know you can hit the nail head every time. And you're going to do it 100 times in a row every day for a week or a month or whatever. And then you're going to back up a little bit more. You're going to go with a little bit more velocity and you're going to hit that nail. And you're going to keep doing it and keep doing it until you build the skills required so that you know when you haul off and hit that nail, you've got a real good chance of hitting that nail, okay? This is exactly what we do. If you remove the money, you won't have nearly the amount of debilitating emotion. Can you imagine being nervous if you hauled off to hit that nail head and you were nervous about whether you're going to hit it or not? You're almost definitely going to hit your thumb. If you've got confidence you probably are going to, to do a good job and hit that nail head. Now, we have a lot more of this we, we cover in our Fast Forward program, which is part of our Pro Trader program. Um, we go into a lot more specifics about how to do this and how to condition yourself to keep doing it automatically. That's a very important thing is the conditioning. That's how you earn confidence is conditioning, Okay. This guy really doesn't have any idea how to hold a hammer or how to use a hammer, but thinking, you know, if I hit it extra hard this time, you know, just maybe. Do you see that your trading is the same way? You're like, okay, well, I missed that trade and I missed that trade and now I'm down, you know, $300 and I need to make that money back. So I'm going to hit it extra hard with a $600 trade so I can make that money back and then make the $300 that I should have. And so we talk ourselves into doing all this stupid stuff, right? But if you practice and you do it slow and you build a foundation, then you can build confidence, okay? So on Tuesday, I said there were two things that you can use immediately to start to begin to unravel the the big tangled ball of emotion. One was to stop thinking about money. The second is to start earning your confidence. And, and day trading demands a unique blend of skills and knowledge and temperament, but probably none as critical to success as confidence. Without confidence, a trader is like a guy navigating stormy seas in a cardboard box. Confidence acts as the cornerstone on which all success trading decisions are made. It's not only about trusting your abilities, it's about having the unwavering belief in your trading system, your skills, and your capacity to just do your job, okay? If you remember from Tuesday and what I just said a minute ago, what's your job? Execute the trade plan. That's your one and only job. That's it. Nothing else. Winning money is not part of your trade plan. It's a byproduct. Okay? Just like a paycheck from a job. Okay? So if you lack confidence, that can lead to a cascade of, of all kinds of detrimental effects. Doubt can breed hesitation, causing traders to miss out on good opportunities or exit prematurely out of fear. Um, it invites emotional responses to market movements, clouding your judgments, leading to impulsive decisions driven by panic and greed. You cannot lack confidence. If you don't have 100% supreme confidence in what you're doing and your ability to follow a plan, you should not be trading with real money. You have got to earn confidence first. And the nice thing is, is you have the opportunity to do that because the tools are available for you to do that in NinjaTrader. 
you can use the, the playback connection with the market replay data, and you can practice your trading until you're so good at it, it's second nature. You don't have to think about the setups. You don't have to think about the rules. You don't have to think about anything. It becomes automatic. Okay? So this is your stabilizing force, confidence is. It allows you to remain disciplined and rational uh, when there's a lot of volatility in the market. So, um, you know, it demands decisiveness and, and resilient, uh, resilience and the ability to adapt to rapidly changing market conditions like it did today. Those of you that were in the trade room today know what I'm talking about. So we, we have a rule that we don't trade in very volatile um, periods during the market. So those can generally be characterized as like the open when price is very volatile or during a scheduled news event. But there are times that we have unscheduled news events, something happens and the markets just go nuts and they don't act the way they should or they typically do because there's something else pushing them and maybe we don't even know what it is. But I have so much confidence it, it, what I, in the system and in my rules that it, when I saw what was happening, I was able to make a quick decision going to my rules and go, okay, it's time to invoke this rule. And this rule is don't trade during overly volatile trading times. I didn't have to think about it or try to figure out what to do. Price was doing something it doesn't normally do today. Therefore, I stopped trading until it stopped doing that. And I, that's because I have a good set of rules. All right. So confidence underpins all the qualities needed for day trading, providing the mental fortitude you need to navigate the uncertainties like today of the market with composure to resolve with reduced emotions. All right. So how are we going to earn confidence? This is so easy, but it evades so many people. And, and it's simple, uh, and that's what's nice about it is its simplicity. So the, I'm going to show you something in a minute that where you can learn more about this, and this is all part of our Fast Forward program also. First thing you want to do, you want to start with a very simple trading system like ours. Ours is very simple. It's, it's a, a linear qualification process. You know, if step one, then go to step two. If step two, go to step three. And it's, it's like that. If you were in the trade room today, you saw I, I pointed out the steps. And I'm going to do that again here in just a minute. So you start with a very simple trading system. And you plan on just winning two ticks a day. Just two ticks. That's it. And you actually should be doing this in sim. Uh, and we go into more detail on how you go about doing that. But uh, just for the sake of this, you're just going to win two ticks. And most of you can figure out how to win two ticks. And if you've got a really good trading system, it gets even easier. So you want just two ticks. And then you see if you can do that 10 days in a row. And most people don't the first time. Um, or the second time, or the third time. Sometimes it takes a few shots at it to do this 10 days in a row. But think about your confidence, even if it's two ticks. You can't buy anything with two ticks, but what you've done is you've proven to yourself that you can be a winning trader, that you do know how to win. You know, you, you probably haven't convinced yourself of that. And not only can you be a winning trader, you can be a consistently winning trader. So now your confidence is starting to grow. So let's move that to three ticks and do it again, 10 days in a row. So what happens? Do you make a bunch of money or does your confidence start to grow? You cannot trade without confidence. You cannot, you will not be successful if you are trading and then hoping. 
if hope is at all part, if you put on a trade and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and you're hoping, oh, I hope it goes up. I hope, I hope, I hope. You're not doing yourself any favors. You're not, you're not confident that what you've done is the right thing. Okay. You cannot trade without it. Now, once you've worked at this a few times and you keep doing this challenge, like we call this the two tick challenge, you can't, you just keep working at it and you keep practicing and you'll notice things start getting easier as you start to build confidence. Not only that, you'll notice that you feel better each day. You'll feel better before you start trading because you've had some success. So what we need to do is build some success, earn some success. See, I can't sell you confidence. You have to earn it. But once you've earned it and once you've realized that you have created a winning foundation, now you've got something to build on. Okay, um, so if you want to learn more about that um, that two tick challenge, this is called two takes to paradise, and it's on the page you registered uh, for this event. It's on that page, um, and this the video will, of this event will also be on that page a little bit later today. So that URL. You'll get both of these. So you can watch that uh, with uh, a lot more information about uh, the two tick challenge. So start putting some consecutive days together of even the tiniest wins and put it in the bank and watch your confidence grow. All right. Part three, the setups and indicators. This is what our trades look like. This is what our chart looks like. I'm going to show you some uh, live trades here in a minute. But I just wanted to show you a quick chart where I can, uh, I'm going to try to draw on this. I never, I don't draw much. Let's see. All right. So you guys can see that, right? Okay. Now price is channeling, right? Price is in a channel. And then price is going to break out of that channel. Right, right here. See how the how small these bars are, and then suddenly price breaks out of this channel. Then then price starts getting overbought. So what we're doing is we're reading and we're looking for strength in this move. So we can anticipate exhaustion. That's what all of these indicators are for. They're helping us measure strength and anticipate exhaustion. So the characteristics, low exposure time. We're in trades maybe a couple of minutes at the most. Uh, I would say a larger portion of our, of our trades are less than one minute, and a good bit of those are 15 seconds or less. We are in and out of the markets extremely fast. That's where the money is the safest, is out of the market. So if you don't have money in the markets, this is another way of removing money, right? So that you have uh, fewer emotions. Well, if your money's not in the market, then you don't have reason to manage your emotions, do you? So you've removed the reason because there's no money out there. So being a, having your money exposed for a short period of time was a huge step for me towards becoming a successful trader over time, um, but not having to worry about the money. I never was, I, I didn't really... Uh, consider myself a scalper, which I actually don't anymore. I don't either now, but most people call short, fast trade scalping. So I'll go along with that. That's fine. Um, but the whole idea with scalping is, is you're in and out so fast that they don't even know you're there. All right. And then you're done. You can sit back and relax and wait for the next one. 
our uh, trade setups are real high probability. We've got a, uh, I'll show you uh, uh, the results over the last four years from our trade room uh, in just a minute. Uh, our heads up display indicator. So these are called heads up display because they're right here. They're right where you're looking. And I'm looking at nothing else to make a trade decision. That's it right there. Now there's a whole lot of information going on inside each of these indicators. I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff going on and on other indicators, you're going to have, you're going to see those all over the screen. You're going to see stuff that looks like, uh, you know, this in order to just show you that, uh, uh, the information that that's all you need for making actionable, uh, trades or actionable trade setups. Okay. And it's yes or no. Do the conditions exist or do they not? That's it. So we get to a point where there's, there's no market analysis. We're not doing any market analysis. We're doing nothing but reacting based on our trade plan. Right? All right. So it's really simple. And this we do this over and over and over again. All right. So I'm going to jump into the meat of this here, uh, which is watching these trades live. And I want to show you guys that this is absolutely doable. I know some people like, oh, it's just too fast. I'll never be able to trade that fast. It's, it's, uh oh, it's really not. Um, it's really not uh, that hard. And I'm going to show you because you'll see me taking the trade on the video. So I'm on this side. Uh, you can see my mouse. You'll watch me. This is all recorded. I'm not doing, I'm not doing anything live here. I'm, other than just playing the video. So the first thing that you're going to notice, <coughs> excuse me, and this is, you're going to hear me say the same thing over and over and over again, but, and, which is great because you don't have to keep relearning and learning new things and trying to understand and figure out um, uh, the, the rules du jour. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever been in any of the trade rooms or any systems where Gosh, it just keeps changing every few months, right? They keep adding things or changing things or whatever. And that's actually part of their business plan is to kind of keep you coming back for more and keep you engaged because doing it the way we do it, it's really boring. And the, their business plan is, well, you don't want your customers to be bored, so we need to keep introducing more things. We're doing the same things we were doing 15 years ago. Therefore, you're going to hear me saying the same things. If you watch our videos, you're going to hear, you're going to see the same thing. Watch our trade of the day videos, you're going to see the same thing. So you'll notice that price is channeling here. And then suddenly, price busts out of this channel. And look at the size of these bars relative to the previous bars. Something's going on, right? So we've got this big push down. Now, this bar here is oversold. That's this outline, this colored outline. It's also, our mo meter has colored this a uh, light gray color. The lighter the bar, the more imminent the exhaustion. This speed tick right here, this little thing, is telling us that this bar is likely being manipulated by something other than retail traders. I, I mean, I could, I could guess that it was an HFT or a quant or hedge fund or whatever. Um, but the orders are being processed through the exchange at a rate that would be unlikely for us little retail traders with our PCs sitting at our uh, desk at home would be able to call each other up on the phone and tell and we tell each other, hey, we got to place these trades really fast. You know, that's not happening. So it's happening at some location that is mechanical, that's that's causing 
these orders to be traded so fast, okay? So we want to know when that's happening because they're doing it for a reason. And they're, so they're, they're pushing this price down. And what we often see after the speed tick is price pulls back. So we've got our ricochet. We've got um, our, our flash and this 3D. Let me show you that on a different bar because at this point, that's not actionable. It's not something that we even care that it's there. So let's just watch this. Now you can also watch the dome on the right side and you can see me placing the trade. So we got what we call freight training a little bit. You know, we don't know exactly when things are going to turn. We don't know exactly, but we know pretty close generally. I mean, that's why we have a stop. Uh, because if, if it's not going to turn like within five or six ticks, then we don't want to be in it. So we're going to have, we're going to let it hit our stop or just let it work itself out a little bit until uh, it decides to go to target, so, like this one did. So the open of this bar, you see this 1D, that means we had one, div oops. I don't wanna make that smaller. We had one of, of our um, momentum oscillators was divergent from price. And as it turns out, I can look right up here and I can see it was the stochastics indicator had diverged from price, and that generated this rock star, okay? So if you see this 3D here, that means three of these momentum oscillators diverged from price, okay? So we just want to look down here, and we can see that this is called the Super D. This is our Super D indicator, and there are times you can see all the way up to 7D, that's every one of our momentum oscillators has diverged from price. Um, and if you want to learn more about divergence and how it works and why it works, uh, you can find that in our videos also. All right, any questions about that? That was called a naked rock star trade. We pushed down real hard. Price was getting... Uh, uh, exhausted because of the strength of the momentum. It's been going on and it can only move so far. A whole bunch of orders got put through really fast, much faster than on these previous bars. Okay. And then we open with divergence here. We had a little bit of this freight trading trying to get price to turn around, but then it did. Now, all right, so he's, and I just grabbed a few trades. Some of these are not winners, by the way. I'll show you. I think there's at least one loser in here. Well, again, look, it looks the same. We got price kind of in a channel here. It busts out of the channel. It takes off. Look at the color of the mo meter. Speed tick, pullback alert, ricochet. All of those things are giving us a heads up that there's a high probability something's about to happen. And then if you think it's hard to trade, and, you know, it does take practice. We have a real strong edge knowing when price is going to turn. The flip side of that is you have to develop skills. Well, the nice thing about that is you can control that. You can't control the markets, but you can control your skill level. All you got to do is practice. This didn't have the rock star, but this qualified for another type of trade called a speed tick, speed tick setup. Speed tick setup doesn't need a, uh, a rock star because I've got this major line of resistance right here. Now, this bar opened here. But I didn't get, I didn't take that trade until... Oops, pause. I got in that trade up here. 
So I was shorting it from up here. So I got a better fill than the open. So I don't worry about being really fast. My mission is to place trades deliberately. I know what I'm doing. I know when I'm doing it. I know where I'm going to do it. And if I go to put the trade on here and I see prices now up here, heck yeah, I'm going to take that better price all day long. Looks a lot like the last one I showed you, right? So, uh, Barbara, see this, bar, this blue box right here? This is the climactic volume. Oh, naked means um, no support or resistance behind the trade. It, it just got that name one day in the trade room. Somebody, somebody said it many years ago, and it just stuck. So with the speed ticks and the rock stars, we used to have all we used to require that we had a line of support or resistance behind the trade. But after crunching the numbers, I started noticing, you know what? They win a lot without that support or resistance. So that's a, but but what the criteria I changed was I added that it needed more confluence if it didn't have support or resistance. All right, Barbara, you still here? You wanted to see um, the climactic volume, and that's this here. Now, this would, um, as it stands right now, if the next bar were to open, this would qualify, again, naked speed tick trade. Naked because our speed tick trades always require major support or resistance. This particular trade... Uh, does not because I have a, a a condition called climactic volume, which is I'm going back measuring over all these bars, and we figure that this is climactic volume based on its definition, and that there's a good probability price is going to change directions after we have climactic volume. This dot here tells us that this is a down thrust bar and that we have a churning action here, meaning that during the, the beginning part of this bar, there was a lot of selling going on. As we got down here, selling and the buyers started fighting. So the buyers were down here waiting. And that and they and so price is going straight down, 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 down. And then it goes do 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 with the buying and selling. Okay, that's a good sign that the buyers are trying to get in at about the same time the sellers should be getting exhausted. Okay? That little dot tells us all of that. And that's critical for us. All right, so there's a potential naked speed tick trade. Okay? This is naked because there's no resist, no support behind it. It qualified because, see the green shadow behind the wick? If it was red, it would not qualify. It means it pulled back too far. But it's green, so this is a go. So this is where I put on a buy order. I think. Unless I missed it. Yeah, I think I missed it. So let's look at another one. These look a lot alike. We do the same thing all day, every day. I can't show you a hundred different things. I can show you maybe five. And that's what we do every day and have been for 15 years. All right, so we got price pushing up. It's overbought. That's that pink outline. This is the line of major resistance, okay? So this may be a speed tick trade. It may be a rock star trade. It may be a naked speed tick or a naked rock, or it may be nothing. So we don't know until the open of the next bar what we're going to do here. So I'm going to wait for the next bar to open. All right. <clears throat> so there's no rock star. So I know it's not a rock star trade. But this trade open, see this right here? This is called our OTS. 
this is how I can see exactly how many ticks it is from the open of this bar to this line. All right, this is the open. This is five ticks. <clears throat> if I were to put on a buy order here, the, the target would be at five ticks. If I were to put on a sell order here, the target is five ticks here. Conversely, if I had the sell order, this would be my target. This would be where my stop would be. And I want to know where the stop would be because I want to see if it's on the other side of this resistance. All this is is a little helper tool. I had a lot of people get confused and think this is a trade because it looks kind of like on Chart Trader when you have a trade on. It looks kind of like that. And I didn't even realize that when I made it because I don't use Chart Trader. Um, I use these trading domes. So anyway, <clears throat> this bar opened right here. That's a speed tick trade setup because I have the resistance behind the trade less than five ticks away. And I know that because that's five right there. So I'm going to short it. Now, this is why we want resistance to be there. Almost got me. I don't know. This may be the loser that I, I put on there. Just to let you guys know, we don't win all of our trades. This was a loser for me. But the conditions are still there to where I'm interested in this instrument. Okay, I'm interested in what's going to happen here. So I just keep watching it. Okay, I got stopped out on that trade. And it wasn't, I mean, it was only seven ticks. It's not a huge loss. We don't have huge winning days and we don't have huge losing days. We are all about consistency. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Now, we're still pushing hard. The bars are getting lighter meaning that exhaustion is becoming more imminent. We have our speed tick, and we're overbought. Things are looking good as far as exhaustion setting in. So we want a good, strong potential for exhaustion. <clears throat> now, we don't have major resistance up here. All right? We need major resistance for it to be a speed tick trade. But we do have minor resistance, which is a uh, this high of the day. So I'm just going to wait for the open of the next bar to make my de decision on whether it qualifies or not. There's a little bit more confluence, and there it is. So we got a rock star. I got a better fill. Remember when I said I'm just deliberate on my trades. I don't rush. Worst thing that happens is price drops and I just miss it. Okay. I don't remember what happens here. Yeah, it ends up being a plus five. Okay, so that and that's what we do. We're looking for a five tick target. And we get out of the markets as quick as we can. Look at this. It looks just like the last ones. Channeling, broke out of the channel, overbought, pullback alert. Got a churning activity in here, suggesting prices... The, the sellers are wanting to get involved. They don't have a setup because nothing happens without a speed tick first. So at this point, I'm just watching. And yes, I can watch six instruments at a time because that's it's easy. You, once this becomes second nature to you, which it does if you practice, then you can easily watch six instruments at a time. You can't trade six, but you can watch them all. All right, there's our rock star. 
There's my trade. I shorted it. While we're watching this, any questions? I mean, this is, I wish, I mean, sometimes I wish this was more complicated because then I could explain more about, you know, everything. Um, a lot of times people have very specific questions about the indicators and what they do. And I could, you know, I could write a chapter in a book about each indicator. But then again, a lot of people just like, I don't care what it does. Just it's not complicated at all. You know what it is? It's like if the first time you get in a car and you look at and you've never seen a car before and you look at all of the dials and the levers and all this other stuff, you go, oh, I can't drive this car. It's too complicated. But once you figure out what it does and, how, and why it's doing it, it's simple. Anybody can drive a car. But if you just look at the car, it seems overly complicated. This is you won't find a more simple trading system that works. The white lines, that's called our FT reset support and resistance lines. They are floor trader pivots, mid pivots, and a couple of other lines. Uh, the list is in our store on our website. Uh, Gene, you can find the, the list. And... Uh, Oh, there you go. Keith found the list. <laughs> Keith is awesome. You'd think he works here. He doesn't. He's just a very helpful guy, and I appreciate him. Oh, I bought that. Uh, yes. I mean, it's a system, right? <clears throat> it's a system. Each piece of the system makes the system better. So you can have a scaled down version of the system, or you could have all of the system. So just like anything else, you can buy parts and pieces of a car, but you may not have the best car if you don't have all the pieces. So, um, yeah, I'm using everything. It just each each indicator is gaining is gathering information from different sources of data. All of those sources, I'm either trying to read strength or I'm trying to read exhaustion. One of those two things, because I want to know what strength, where the strength is, because there's always exhaustion after a strong move because people start taking profits after a strong move <clears throat> they always have they always will that's why this always works after a strong move people see an opportunity to take some profits off the table okay so this is this is how we've been doing over the last four years Marshall, uh, one of our traders in the trade room, uh, started collecting this data for us, and uh, he used to be a, a budget analyst, I think, uh, for a big corporation, and uh, he's in our trade room, trades with us every day, good trader, and collects this information, and every year he provides it to us, so we just add it to the previous years. So, and if you want to... I'm sure Keith has already put a link in there for you for this, but um, always, yes, one-minute charts. Because the, Now, think about this on the one-minute charts. What we're trying to do is figure out what price is going to do right now, not five minutes from now, 10 minutes from now, 30 minutes an hour, because remember, we don't want the exposure time in the market. The longer you're in the market, the more likely it is that you're going to take a loss. That's just the way it is. The more time you expose your money, the more likely it is somebody's going to figure out how to take it from you. So we want to be in and out really quick. 
So we want the most current information because we want to see a reaction right now so we can place the trade and get out of the trade quickly. All right. So uh, for those of you that haven't done it yet, you can sign up for our trade room. All right. Um, so, yeah, sign up. Come hang out with us in the trade room for five days for free. And you can see the same thing that I showed you here today, and we just do it over and over and over again. We sit and wait. So um, I'm going to offer you guys for being here today and for watching this video um, a coupon code, no pain 20 for 20% 20 off anything in our store. And there's the, the link to our store.